Wow, here we are again, folks. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful day. It was raining a short time ago this morning. Isn't that a beautiful piece of uh, grass my wife's got growing out here? Everything is so beautiful. The birds out here and the hummingbirds getting the nectar and the bees and the butterflies and everything. God's earth is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Do you know, it doesn't matter where you are, if you'll stop. Say this morning you're in a model in your mind and you've turned this on. You could go sit under a tree and just stop. Just stop your model, stop your worrying, stop your everything that's going on, and just take a look. Look at the trees, look at the sky, look at what God has made for you and I, for mankind. This earth was made for man, and man was made for this earth. Food was made for the body, and the body was made for food. God did not need one single solitary thing that he made him on this earth other than fellowship. God made man for fellowship. But when he made man for fellowship, he made everything else for man so that man could enjoy this earth and everything on it. He gave a man an acquaintance with all the animals. You remember that Adam named every single animal that Adam had the acquaintance enough with the animals to name them. He could, they were his pets. You say, all of them? Yeah, all of them. He named them all. The trees were his trees. He named all of the trees. This large cedar tree right behind me, Adam's the one that gave it the name, cedar tree. And uh, these beautiful flowers that are right behind me here, they were named by Adam. They called, and now they call them Florida showers, but they were just showers. But Florida wasn't around when Adam was around. I guess it was in the mind of God, but we're going to look at Bible sanctification today. Bible sanctification. When we are saved, our soul and our spirit immediately is sanctified. From the past, our body is sanctified. But our body is not sanctified to the future. You say, well, how does that work, Brother Peter? Well, we're going to have some responsibilities in the part of sanctification. We are going to have some responsibilities in the part of sanctification. Let me tell you what God did when he delivered me. He delivered me immediately from alcohol. I've never taken a drink since 1972, being an alcoholic. He delivered me from cursing. I haven't swore since 1972, November 5th, for o'clock in the morning. And he delivered me from that. I also did some other things, though, and that was I smoked. And I did not accept the deliverance of the smoke, and I kept doing it. And God showed me very quickly that it was one of the deeds of the body I needed to modify. And that was called sanctification, sanctifying the outside of your body to the same as the inside of your body. God sanctified the inside of my body, now I need the outside of my body to match the inside. Well, how do I do that? I had to lay down the cigarettes. Well, I didn't want to. I love to smoke. I love to smoke more than anybody in the world. I could smoke three cigarettes at one time. I, I tried smoking. I said, I want to smoke cigars, so I won't smoke so many cigarettes. Well, I smoked cigar and then smoked two cigarettes to wind it up. I smoked the pipe, smoked cigars and cigarettes in between. I was hooked on tobacco. I was hooked on that nicotine. And I continued to do it. And for one year, I continued to smoke, trying to be sanctified from it. Yes, I laid them down. Yes, I laid them. I threw packs out the window. I laid them on all. I did everything with them. And then the first chance I got, I'd get one lighted. So it was a battle. Sanctifying the body from cigarettes was a battle. Now there's another battle here. Sanctifying the tongue. Sanctifying the tongue. The Bible said if a man could bridle his tongue, he could be holy. <laughs> if a man could bridle his tongue, to bridle your tongue, that's a sanctification. Not to open your mouth when you ain't supposed to. By the way, I do it, you do it, and we all do it. We're walking by two people talking. They're talking about something. And we put our two cents worth in. And you know what? We haven't any idea what they're talking about. We may have heard two words of the conversation. And those two words might not have really meant anything in the conversation. So we have to be careful to bridle our tongue at different times. Now, sanctification is another thing. I'm going to read some verses here. 
And in those verses, it's going to talk about a husband and wife loving each other. Wife, love your husband. And husband, love your wife. That's a part of sanctification. When two people come together, when they first get married, it's a bunch of infatuation. It's not a bunch of love. Love comes after the infatuation. Love comes after the marriage ring. Comes after the marriage vow. Then love comes when you go home with each other and you and you, you find out that uh, maybe uh, his feet stink and maybe you burp and maybe this or that or this or that. And I tell you what, the sanctifying of a marriage comes after the ring is put on. And after you ask Jesus, forgive you of your sin, come into your heart and save your soul, sanctification of the body comes after salvation. And you have got to, you are sanctified in the eyes of God at that moment, 100%. But then, you've got to start your own sanctification. They said, listen to this. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray that God, your whole spirit, your soul, and your body be sanctified and be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he has sanctified us blameless in that sense of the word. But 1 John 1 9 says, If you sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you of that sin if you ask him and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, unrighteousness is opposite from sanctification. So that means that you can interfere in your sanctification of your body from the outside and mess up your body. And so your body needs to be sanctified. You are sanctified in the eyes of Christ, but then you've got to stay sanctified outside of the body. Now, uh, I am an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And because I am an ambassador, when I sit before this screen, I dress like one. I put my tie and my suit on. If you were the President of the United States and you hired an ambassador, and he came uh, up to the podium with his t-shirt on, I suspect you'd have some words with him afterwards. Say, if you're going to be an ambassador of this president, uh, you're going to have to look like one. And so, therefore, you would need to become looking like an ambassador. We need to look like what we are. Let's just follow after peace with all men and the sanctification without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, he's saying here that I already sanctified you and you won't see the Lord without that sanctification that I gave you. But now, if men are going to see the Lord in you, they're going to have to see you be sanctified from the things of the world. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3 said, It is the will of God that a man be sanctified. And then, let's go on here. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. There again is the water called the word. The washing of the water is not water outside water. We don't get dipped to be washed. We, we get washed by the word. This word, the Bible, the Holy Bible, washes us and makes us clean. Tells us what we can do and not do that would interfere with God, that would interfere with what is called justification, which is we're just as if we never sinned, sanctification, and that's something that God gave us, reconciliation, that's something that God did for us, he reconciled us, he justified us, and the righteousness of life, he gave us the righteousness of life that we could stand before the throne of God with him, and now this thing, sanctification, he gave it to us, up to a point and now the point that stops is where you and I have to come in and sanctify this body with instruction with instruction the instruction from the Word of God the water that cleanses is the Word of God and let's look here that he might present uh, to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without a blemish. Now, we are supposed to be holy and without a blemish. Some of us are going to be more responsible than others to make sure that we are what God would have us to be. The more you know about the Bible and the more you study it, the more 
you accountable you become to it. Now, in the experience of sanctification, what attitude? What what would be the attitude that you and I should take in as we experience sanctification? It's an awesome truth, but it is a truth that we must do this. Second Thessalonians two thirteen. God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and the belief and the truth. He sanctified our spirit. We cannot do anything about that. That is not something we can do anything about. The only thing we can do something about that God did for us that we could possibly uh, add to the seeing of it is from the outside that people would see that we sanctified our body and we're not doing those things that the world, we're separating ourselves from things that the world do. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3.18 and 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7 tells us about something about our sanctification. And God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Paul the Apostle writing this to the Philippian church in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Paul said, leaving those things that were behind, leaving all of those things that, that so easily beguiled me, that carried me away, that brought me away from God, that took me away, it took me to a selfish thing. And and I've got to leave those behind and press on to the mark of the hall call, uh, mark of the high calling and forget those things that were behind me and never dabble in them again. You couldn't pay me a million dollars to put a cigarette in my mouth. You could not pay me a million dollars to drink a swallow of alcohol. God had those things delivered from me. He put those behind me. They are behind me, and they'll not come back up to be used of me again. Here we are again, back in the book, and here we see uh, growing grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, I count myself not that I have apprehended, Paul said. I know I just read that, but I'm going to reread it. He hadn't hap apprehended. He has not come completely through because he's still in the flesh. After he leaves this body and opens the door to eternal life, it will be completed. But until then, we have in this body a war that we're warring, and the members of our body wars against the members of the Spirit. It said, For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkled, unclean, sanctifieth, and purifieth, of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to save, serve the living God. Everything other than faith is dead works. If we have anything in our life other than faith in God and following God, we have dead works. Hebrews 9, 13 and 14, and Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 29 tells us some things about that. <clears throat> we, we had a change brought about in us. Romans 12, 2 said, And but we are not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How can you do that? You can't commune with God and be doing ugly things. You can't sit and study your Bible while you're drinking a beer. You can't do this and things you can't do. You can't commune with God and have some things in your life that shouldn't be. You can't take the Lord's name in vain and be studying the Bible. You can't have communion with God and be doing the opposite from Him. It won't work. He said, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind, the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and a perfect will of God. 
I am in the proven, acceptable will of God right now. I am where God wanted me for this time, 2012, where I am right now. You say, hi, now where did you get here? I had to get here <laughs> by the hand of God, that's all I can say. <laughs> There's no other reason why I would be here except the hand of God brought me here and kept me alive, by the way, to bring me here because I didn't have the ability uh, to stay alive. I was one that was headed for sudden death, for sure. And uh, so I had to, God just had to keep me alive. What change did that bring in me that God kept me alive? And he says right here, I be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed. That's the change that I got. I was transformed immediately and been transforming some other things since. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in it. This is what I've been telling you. First John 1 9 says if we sin yet, we he's faithful and guess faithful to give us. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord first. His judgment. Seeking righteousness. Seek meekness. Seek the things of the Lord. Zechariah 2 and 3. And whatsoever ye do, in word and in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hey, can I drink a beer in the name of the Lord Jesus? Can I smoke a cigarette in the name of the Lord Jesus? Can I dip some snuff in the name of the Lord Jesus? Can I do the things of the world in the name of the Lord Jesus? Only those things that are permissible and there are things that are not permissible. There are things that are part of the world. If it is something, overeating, I have cut back myself. I have lost 22, 23 pounds in the last couple of months. Was I fat? No, I wasn't fat, but I was going that way. And we must not overeat. We must cut back. We must do things that are proper for this body. It is the house and temple of the Lord. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do it all in the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 He's saying, whatever you eat or drink, do it in the name of the Lord. If you, if you go into a restaurant and it's an all-you-can-eat restaurant, and you get one plate, and you thank the Lord for that plate, <laughs> bow your head and thank Him for the second one and see what happens. You can't say grace twice, you say it once, but if you're overeating, you're going to have to say it two or three times. So, we need to cut back. And besides that, if we're Christians, we need to be good Christian examples. Many Christians after church go guide themselves, and the world says, look at that fat glutton. And he's a glutton. And the Bible talks about gluttony. It said, uh, mortify therefore the members which are upon the earth, the functions uncleanness, inordinate, affections, evil, uh, covetousness, covetousness, idolatry, and the things that, that bring the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Do you know where the idolatrous comes in today mostly? Uh, lots of it right on the TV screen. We watch idolatry. We watch idolatry. The TV screen becomes idolatry read to us. We sit in front of that thing for hours yet we can't pick up a Bible and read it for 10 minutes a day. Say, I can't get 10 minutes a day. Well, I say, from 2 to 3 get 10 minutes. No, I'm watching the judges. Wow. You're going to swap the judges for some Bible reading? Hey, we need to look at ourselves. Shape up or ship out. <laughs> ship out or shape up. All right, I got to go.